nothing warms my heart more than watching you arrive and gather and hug each other. This Lessons and Carols service brings together uh, old and new friends. People travel from all over to make sure they're here for this particular service, and so we want to welcome you back, welcome home. We're glad to see you. Uh, if it happens to be that you are here and local to the area and you are considering a church home and you want to learn more about us, there is in the pew in front of you an orange card where you can give us your name, your email address, a phone number, you know, check off what it is that you need to know. Uh, we weekly have an email where we send out all our announcements in a publication called The Buzz. So if you want to know what's the buzz, we'll tell you what's happening. How about that? <clears throat> um, but again, welcome. A couple of announcements. Um, first, I want to share with you, we've been praying for Bill Zepp, and he, he did pass last Sunday. Bill was 94 years old, spent his whole life a member of this congregation. So you can uh, visit with the family at the Bridgewater Funeral Home tomorrow from 10 to 11. And then at 11 o'clock at the funeral home, we'll have a funeral service, a memorial service, a chance to celebrate his life, even as we grieve his passing. So I hope you'll consider coming out and, and supporting the family, uh, Diane, his wife, Sherry, his daughter, and Marge, his sister. So please consider that. That's tomorrow, again, at the Bridgewater Funeral Home. Visitation 10 to 11 and service at 11 o'clock. Monday, tomorrow, just tomorrow, we'll have a blue Christmas service here in the sanctuary at 7 p.m. You all know, I'm sure, that the holiday season is a great joy. But for some, it is also a difficulty. It's a reminder of people who've passed. It's a reminder of days gone by. We carry into the season our own burdens, whether that be an, an illness or a concern for somebody, a loneliness. And so we recognize how hard it is for some in this season. You see in the back a blue Christmas tree, and there are cards that are decorating the tree. It is a place where people put their prayer concerns for the season. And then we gather on Monday night at 7 p.m. and we recognize some of those burdens and pray for one another and allow both joy and grief to find a home in our hearts. That service is in person, but it'll also be streamed again at 7 p.m. on Monday. And then the Christmas Eve schedule. So Christmas Eve is a week away and it's a Sunday and we will be here at 10 a.m. and we will celebrate fourth Advent and then our Christmas Eve services will begin in the afternoon. At 4.30 with a family-friendly service, there'll be a pageant and sheep like real ones. <laughs> and uh, there'll also be candlelight at that service, but we will not be uh, celebrating the Sacrament of Communion at 4.30. There's just a, a lot going on. Then we have two traditional services at 8 p.m. and again at 11 p.m. All our services will be streamed uh, so those at a distance can participate in worship with us. But we sure hope that you come in person and pick one or all. Come early, come often. Uh, if you're coming at 8 or 11, you want to come early. You want to come 30 minutes early because we'll have pre-service music, which will be beautiful. And so I encourage you to get here at 7.30 or at 10.30 to be here in time for that, for those services. And finally, I just want to encourage you so that we can really be present to the music and the scriptures, which will bring us unto Bethlehem this morning. Check your cell phone. Make sure it's on silent so that we can be fully present with one another. Friends, let us recognize the spirit in our midst. Let us find joy in the people sitting beside us and behind us in front of us. And let us give ourselves over to the music and the scriptures of Christmas.
Christmas lights and holding sleepy babies. By singing loudly and looking for good news. By telling the story of Jesus and showing up for our community. There are a million ways to practice joy. So today, we light the candle of joy as a reminder and a charge. And with God's help, may we bring joy into our weary world. Amen. for the children's time. Hi, kids. <laughs> How's everyone doing today? Yeah, good. Are we excited? Isn't it exciting here? Do you see everything that's going on? Isn't it all beautiful? Are you excited about what's happening? What's coming soon? Christmas! Christmas. And what does Christmas bring us? <laughs> presents. It brings us presents. What else does it bring us? Joy. Can we say joy together? Joy. joy. And all of today, all of the stuff that's happening here, and what Mr. Ben has prepared with the choirs and the strings and the bells and the brass, all of it is to bring joy because Jesus is coming. And when you have joy, what do you want to do? When you hear music and you have joy, what do you want to do? Dance. Dance. How about we all stand up just a little bit? Just a little bit? Just shake it off. And give me your best dance moves. Can I see your best dance moves? All right, woo, we got some dance moves. Come on, let's see it. This brings us joy. Can I get joy? Can we say joy together? Oh, we can do better than that. Do we have joy together? Joy! We have joy because we're celebrating Jesus, and Jesus brings us joy. So how about we sit down and pray? Dear Lord, thank you so much for today. Thank you for joy for music, for singing, for family, and the birth of Jesus. Thank you, God, for being our Savior. In Jesus' name we pray, with lots of joy, amen.
Ben says Stan. Beloved in Christ, at this service let it be our care and delight to hear again the message of the angels and in heart and mind to go even unto Bethlehem and to see this thing which has come to pass and the babe lying in a manger. Therefore, let us read in Mark and Holy Scripture the glorious stories leading to the Messiah's birth. But first, let us pray for the needs of the whole world, for peace on earth and goodwill among all God's people, for unity within the church that Christ came to build. And because this would bring joy to God's heart, let us remember in Christ's name the poor and the helpless, the cold and the hungry and the oppressed, the sick and them that mourn, the lonely and the unloved, the aged and the little children, especially those who have so recently seen so much tragedy. Bless all those for whom we have shared concerns. And in the silence of this moment, 
those we speak unto you in the silence of our hearts or even aloud. Lastly, let us remember before God all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore and in a greater light. That multitude which no one can number, whose hope was in the word made flesh, and with whom in the Lord Jesus we are one forevermore. These prayers and praises we humbly offer up to heaven in the name of the Prince of Peace, who taught us all to pray, saying together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. The prophet speaks peace. A shoot shall come from a stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness, he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek on earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips, he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf, the wolf shall live with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the lion and the fatling together, and the little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, the young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play at the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Thanks be to God.
The prophet Micah foretells the glory of little Bethlehem. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore, he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. The rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure. From now he shall be great to the ends of the earth and he shall be the one of peace. Thanks be to God. The angel Gabriel visits Mary. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a young virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. 
And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no husband? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son, and is the sixth month for her, who is said to be barren for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Thanks be to God.
Luke tells of the birth of Christ. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be enrolled, each to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to be delivered. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them at the inn. Thanks be to God.
shepherds go to the manger. And in that region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy, which will come to all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and to earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. Thanks be to God.
In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For, for we observed his star at his rising, and we have come to pay him homage. When, when King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chiefs, priests, and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has, has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, of Judah, there are by no means least among the rulers of Ju Judah. For, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he had sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star they had seen in its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down to pay him homage. Then, opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they had left for their own country by another road. Thanks be to God.
John unfolds the great mystery of the Incarnation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, all things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him, but to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God. Children who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or the will of humanity, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Thanks be to God.
the gift of the Christ child. Divinity and humanity commingled, heaven to earth come down. Because that happens, anything is possible. It gives us hope and makes it possible for us to move through life, believing the best in each other and the best of what's possible. And it inspires generosity. What do we give in response of so great a gift, so great a story, so great a savior? Well, we give music, the gift of music. So we are grateful today for that gift given to us through our choirs, the bells and the adult vocal choir and our instrumentalists and Ben who pulled it all together miraculously. Did you watch him working through all those things? It's a gift in response to the birth of the Christ child. What else can we give? We, we give gifts. You saw them collected. We gave all 75, and now I heard there were 77 children. We added two, and all of those children's Christmas wishes have been met by your generosity. So thank you. Thank you. These are children in the foster care system in our state who are already living lives of challenge. Let these gifts be just a little piece of grace, a moment of hope, a little bit of joy. We move on now to our individual opportunities to give of ourselves, our time, our talent, and treasure. And we are, of course, collecting for the ongoing needs of the church, which are many, that we might continue to do the things we do for God, God's kingdom, and the good news. So we hope that you will give generously. But we are also this day collecting our Christmas joy offering. It's a denominational annual offering. 50% of that offering makes it possible for students to learn and grow at Presbyterian colleges and universities, um, particularly those in communities of color, helping to make secondary university education possible. The other 50%, and this is annually what we do as a denomination, goes to assist current and retired church workers, pastors and youth directors and ministers of music and so on and so forth when they happen to have financial crises. An important collection indeed, and churches in our denomination around the country are collecting this offering today or during the Advent season. So if you would like to give to that, there are envelopes in the pews in front of you. Just mark it Christmas Joy. If you're at home and you want to give to that, in the drop-down menu you go to mission, and then you'll have some options and look for the Christmas joy offering. In these ways, we respond to the gift of the Christ child. We give just a little back, having been given so much. So let us continue our worship with the giving of our gifts.
Let us pray. Lord, we give you thanks for the blessings of this life. For the blessing of music, Lord, we give you thanks. For the blessing of scripture, Lord, we give you thanks. For the blessing of each other, for the roofs over our heads, for the food on our tables, for the resources within and beyond us that we can share for your kingdom's glory. We pray your blessing on these, our gifts, in Christ's name, amen. For coming. Thank you for singing. Thank you for playing your instruments and ringing the bells and giving us a little foretaste of the glory of God, which lives within us and which awaits us, which inspires us and carries us on. I hope you will take what you got here this day and let it guide you through the Christmas season. Don't get caught up in the other stuff. You can enjoy it, but let this story be your guide. And not just for December 25th, but throughout the rest of your life. Friends, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God 
and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day, fill you, guide you, and give you joy that you might spread that great good news wherever you go. Amen.